A lot of people are completely unaware of this, have never realized it, it has never occurred to them to think about this, but our human languages, and it doesn't matter what language you speak, any human language, is completely based on what the philosopher Daniel Dennett would call the intentional stance, right down into the basic constructs of what makes human language. And like I said, it is any language that any human has ever spoken. And this we can always recognize in any language as concepts such as the subject, the verb, and the object. All of these are concepts that are firmly based in the intentional stance. An agent is something or somebody like a human being or an animal or something of that nature that we would consider in our day-to-day -day activity of being able to act autonomously, to act on its own will in order to verb do something in order to object achieve something to manipulate again the object something else in reality an inanimate object or of course other agents now that is something that we normally don't have to worry too much about you know when we are like i said to somebody at the water cooler chatting to our colleagues we don't have to care too much about this realization that all of human language is based on this intentional stance. It doesn't matter that much. And it doesn't even matter when we're looking at things like the news and we see headlines such as massive earthquake causes collapse of buildings and numerous deaths. We understand at a fundamental level that the earthquake is of course not an agent. But it is easier to talk about it in such terms. It is easier to talk as if it were an agent because we can then use the word cause as some sort of shorthand. So we do not have to start describing everything that happened during the earthquake in meticulous scientific detail in order to establish what happened in what order and what happened next. But when it comes to a more philosophical outlook on life, when we are start, starting to philosophize, in other words, we cannot be that lazy. We cannot afford to simply dismiss such things and say like, oh, it doesn't matter that much because in a philosophical context, I'm afraid it does. It is extremely important to understand at a fundamental level that when you start using words such as why, causation, cause, or even because, you are really talking in the intentional stance and you are really looking for agency and trying to find actions done by agents in order to achieve an objective. And as long as you are remain at least in the back of your mind aware of the fact that that's what you're doing it's not so bad but when you forget you start making silly mistakes such as thinking that the world is run by something called cause and effect for example i cannot see how that could possibly be the case and in order for you to understand this understand where i'm coming from I would like you to follow me in a short little Gedanken experiment. Okay? Just imagine the following two things. We've got two snapshots, two photographs, say, of a scenario that's unfolding. Say, billiard balls on a billiard table. You see a snapshot where they are in this position and another snapshot where they are in that position. And you know that the two scenarios that you're seeing are in a relationship, in a temporal relationship with each other. Now you can take the first snapshot and the second snapshot 
and work out how time would have had to evolve using Newtonian mechanics in order to move, evolve from this first snapshot to the second snapshot. How things must have happened, what forces must have been applied to the balls, what must have happened to the balls in the first picture in order to arrive at the second picture. The funny thing is, you can do exactly the same thing the other way around. In other words, there is no way looking at the two snapshots, even if you know that the two are related to each other, knowing that one evolved out of the other, you can work out what forces must have been involved in order to arrive from one to the other, but what you cannot work out is which one was first. And this is an elementary understanding that you must reach about what the laws of nature that we human beings invented in order to describe what we see happening around us in reality, the fundamental, fundamental nature of these laws of physics, these mathematical, mathematical formulas that we use to describe how we see things evolving around us in reality, how these are fundamentally different from the natural language that we use in order to communicate with each other. Like I said before, the natural language that we use in order to communicate with each other is firmly based in this intentional stance that Daniel Dennett came up with. This intentional stance that thinks about everything in concepts of agents and actions and objects. Mathematical language has no such burdens. The language of the laws of nature that we created in order to describe reality is not burdened with any of this. And I challenge anybody to tell me where in any sets of laws of nature, whether it's Newtonian, uh, Einsteinian, quantum mechanics, or M theory, where in any of these laws of nature, any of these uh, constructs, where you can point at any of the mathematical formulas in any of those theories and say, that's where it enshrines our notion of cause and effect. And that is a very important realization that people must come to, because that means that we cannot simply look at reality and say like, oh, everything around here is governed by cause and effect, because the only way we can understand terms like cause and effect is in terms of agency. But agency is an intentional stance concept. It's not a fundamental concept in reality. It's a concept that we deal with in daily life. So cause and effect then must go out of the window. Now I'm happy for somebody to suggest how we could rescue the notion of cause and effect at a more fundamental level. I'd be very interested in hearing how you think that might be achieved because I don't see it happening. I don't see how it could be achieved. And that's then very interesting, because if we then take that realization, unless somebody can convince me otherwise, the realization that cause and effect are not actually a fundamental part of reality, then we need to realize that ontological arguments for existence of things people call gods, whatever they are, are simply invalid. They are arguments that are based on an intentional stance outlook on reality, which simply isn't compatible with a more fundamental look at reality. And therefore, all these arguments are by necessity invalid.